Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. The movie kicks off with a dark and creepy atmosphere. An old, wooden door opens and a group of people, some wearing cloaks, enter. They have captured a man and brought him along with them. Inside, they make him wear a long white dress and tie the poor soul to a table. Meanwhile, the guy with the cloak performs a weird ritual, chanting some mysteriously evil words. He then orders one of his companions to put the mask on him. A strange shadow of a mask creeps over the whimpering man. Right that moment, the cloaked man takes hold of a sledgehammer. He aggressively chants something. And things get intense when he smacks the mask over the tied-up guy with the hammer. The scene cuts to a shower. We see a woman named Carmen who is a journalist. She just steps out of the shower and goes out to the living room where her photographer boyfriend, Marcus, sits. Carmen is tense and worried. They get into a bit of a tiff because Carmen's job seems to take up all her time, leaving Marcus feeling a bit neglected. He tries to talk to her about giving him time and not getting too swamped by work. The couple argue a bit and then Marcus leaves afterwards, feeling dejected. Later that day, Carmen goes to her office to talk to her boss, who assigns her a task to look into why bees are disappearing from a farm. But Carmen is more intrigued by a certain Eric Taylor case, the mystery of several tourists who have gone missing while backpacking across Europe. Her boss, though, is not too keen on the idea and sees it as a common occurrence. Carmen persists, telling him about her research on the topic. It seems she has been working on her leads and has found out how after the disappearances, the luggage of these people turned up in different locations all across Europe. She talks about Taylor. The man that we saw in the beginning of the movie and how she has also contacted his mother who recently got a call from the Prague airport with the news of her son's luggage. However, Carmen's boss remains firm and doesn't want her digging into the case. He believes that people and their belongings go missing all the time. As she's about to leave, he advises her not to waste the company's time on missing people and to focus on the other B case that he told her about. Later, Carmen and her intern named Sarah pay a visit to Taylor's mother's house. Despite all that firm rejection from her boss, Carmen seems to be a very stubborn lady. Taylor's mom, who is named Laura, explains how her son was always into traveling. He never paid much attention to his studies. She says that now she has her son's luggage and has sought assistance from the Polish and American police, but they are too busy to help. They have moved up Taylor's name to the missing persons list and have moved the case to another department. Carmen expresses her desire to see the luggage, and the mother allows her to go upstairs to take a look, but she herself does not escort her up as it is difficult for her to be in that room. Up in the room, Carmen finds the man's belongings on the bed, including his journal. She flips through it to find the last journal entry to be a Balvania. Happy that she got a lead, she rushes downstairs and asks permission from Laura to borrow the journal before they depart. The mother happily gives her permission and the duo thank her. Back at home, Carmen settles in to read the journal on her bed. Unexpectedly, a gust of air stirs and she feels uneasy. At first, she ignores it, but then gets a little creeped out and gets up to close the window. All of a sudden, she hears noise from behind and whips around to see Taylor standing at his bedroom door. The door slowly closes and he appears right beside her, inside the room. Startled, she quickly turns around and sees the missing man with blood dripping down his eyes and mouth. This grotesque sight alone is enough to scare her senseless. The man shouts at her to leave him alone. Gasping for breath, she awakens, realizing it was just a dream. Later that day, Carmen goes to talk with her boyfriend about mending their relationship. In the midst of their conversation, she proposes that he join her and Sarah on a trip to Alvania and Poland to document their journey, inspired by what she read in the missing man's journal. Marcus is hesitant, deeming it risky, so she urges him to think it over. Later on, Carmen's boss shows up at their office to assign them the task of investigating the vanishing bees. Unbeknownst to him, Carmen and Sarah have been quietly preparing for their plans to go to Poland. He hands them the file related to the bees case and bids them good luck. Meanwhile, Carmen gets a call from Marcus, telling her that he is going to come with her to investigate the case. Following this, Marcus drives Carmen and Sarah to Poland. Along the way, Carmen reads aloud from the missing man's journal, in which he describes the enigmatic village in Alvania. He writes about how there does not seem to be any motels or hotels here in the village. Moreover, there are lands for growing mushrooms and there seems to be a strange kind of fog sitting near a forest that almost seems like smoke, but is not smoke. He also writes how the people in this town are cold and distant. Marcus lightens up the mood by joking a little and further down the road. They stumble upon a town that matches the eerie description from the journal. The townspeople appear far from welcoming, exuding an air of suspicion and caution. Their path leads them to a man known as Butcher, engrossed in the grisly task of pig butchery. Nearby, a young girl quietly gathers flowers, seeking answers. They approach her with a photo of the missing man, their questions hanging in the air. The girl hesitates, her eyes darting with uncertainty. And just as she is about to speak, Butcher strides forward, his voice sharp and filled with authority in their native language. Fearfully, the girl rushes them to leave, a deep and etched on her face. Undeterred by the cold reception, they venture further into the village. Their exploration takes them to a chapel where a group of men, bearing an uncanny resemblance to cult leaders, stand outside, receiving reverence and deference from the villagers. The moment of intrigue intensifies when they spot a peculiar dense fog, shrouding a specific area of the nearby forest, mirroring the journal's cryptic description. The fog seems to pulse with an unnatural energy. Carmen, Marcus, and Sarah decide to investigate, 
their curiosity overcoming the ominous aura. However, just as they approach the forest, the butcher who stopped the young girl earlier, flanked by two imposing men, confronts them, their eyes ablaze with a stern warning. They demand them to stop their prying and immediately leave this place. When they resist, the man gets a little forceful and grabs Carmen, pushing her aside. But three intruders comply, retreating swiftly to their waiting car. As Marcus drives them away from the unsettling encounter, Carmen abruptly requests a stop and insists on returning to delve into the enigmatic fog in the forest. She makes her case to Marcus, confessing that their boss remains oblivious to this new, eerie development. Returning without a compelling story would not only jeopardize her journalistic career but also leave this unsettling mystery unsolved. This extremely stubborn woman is going to get herself butchered. Moments later, they arrive at the forest and Marcus warns her that they would only check out the area and that is it. The trio gets out of the car and go venturing deeper into the eerie place until they chance upon the area enveloped in a thick, unsettling fog. Marcus takes a picture but tells them that once they get inside that fog, there would be no chance of photographing or recording anything else since the fog is so thick. Carmen and Marcus engage in a heated debate about whether to photograph this enigmatic site. The man argues that they better leave, since it is dangerous to venture inside a place where they may not even be able to see each other. Amid their disagreement, Sarah, driven by curiosity or perhaps an unexplainable force, steps into the fog, and to their astonishment, she vanishes within its mysterious shroud. Carmen and Marcus exchange alarmed glances, their hearts pounding as they anxiously await Sarah's return. Time seems to crawl, and impatience takes hold. Marcus, growing increasingly concerned, mentions that they should have been on their way out of this eerie place. Carmen, thinking that he is suggesting to leave, refuses to abandon Sarah and the unknown. She tells Marcus to wait while she goes to find the girl. The man stops her saying that he would check out where she is, but Carmen refuses. Determined to find Sarah herself, since she was the one who brought her here, Carmen takes a deep breath and plunges into the enigmatic fog. As she steps forward, she is engulfed in the white fog completely. All around her, she feels a strange frightening sense of evil. She keeps moving forward and calling out to Sarah but to no avail. She isn't even able to see what's around her, let alone Sarah. Back outside, Marcus waits for the two girls all alone. After a few nerve-wracking moments, he sees Sarah emerge from inside the fog, a mix of and shock etched across her face. He rushes to her side but the woman looks totally out of it, gasping for breath. They try calling out to Carmen, hoping to make her come back since Sarah has come out, but the woman is oblivious to their calls. She continues her search within the fog where she stumbles upon a truly chilling sight. A ghastly statue clutching a In a bold move, Carmen captures a photo of this disturbing discovery. With cautious steps, she proceeds to explore further. To her utter horror, the statue abruptly pivots its head to face her. She gasps, startled with utter fear at this nightmarish spectacle. The statue's eyes start to weep blood. The heart it clutches pulsates with life and starts oozing blood, as if the beastly statue is squeezing the life out of it. Overwhelmed with Carmen flees from the menacing statue, haunted by eerie whispers echoing in her ears. She suddenly bursts out of the fog, and to her immense relief, Marcus and Sarah quickly spot her. Carmen, trembling with fear, questions Sarah about what she witnessed. Sarah recounts her eerie encounter with the statue, and both of them share a profound sense of curiosity and dread about the secrets hidden within this mysterious forest. Marcus takes charge of the situation and quickly ushers them in the direction of the car. As they prepare to leave the eerie forest, their attention is abruptly drawn to the young girl named Lydia who had initially warned them to leave the place. With a sense of urgency, she approaches them and reveals her knowledge of the missing man's whereabouts. Trusting her, they follow her deeper into the heart of the forest despite Marcus's unwillingness. With a growing sense of trepidation, they arrive at a strange wooden door in the heart of the forest. Lydia tells them that Taylor is in there and they proceed inside, opening the door. They see stairs leading down to yet another wooden door. Lydia takes the lead and goes down to open the other door for them. She says that their friend is here. The trio proceed inside. Exploring this mysterious place, they are confronted with a chilling sight. Wooden caskets containing the lifeless bodies of people, each adorned with an unsettling metal mask affixed to their faces. Marcus begins documenting this horrifying sight with his camera. Carmen believes that Taylor must be in one of the. They begin looking for him when surely enough, Sarah locates the missing man within one of these caskets. She remembers the tattoo on his hand that she saw in one of the pictures at his house. Carmen, compelled to free him, attempts to remove the securely fastened metal mask, but it resists her efforts. Marcus mentions that the symbol in his mask is the same one that he saw on the church back in the village. It becomes increasingly apparent that the villagers are no ordinary folk. They appear to be part of a clandestine cult that conducts bizarre rituals on unsuspecting tourists before sealing their fate. As Carmen prepares to inquire further with the young girl, she vanishes without a trace, leaving the trio perplexed and concerned. Desperate to find her, they rush towards the exit, only to discover the door locked from the outside. Marcus, using all his skills, works to unlock it. In the midst of this, Sarah senses a presence beyond another door. Thankfully, Marcus manages to open their locked exit. They quickly rush outside to find their way to the car. Their escape from the forest is harrowing, as they soon notice the villagers hot on their heels. Fear gripping them, they resort to flee on all fours if need be, to evade the pursuing threat. Sarah stops midway, gasping for breath. Marcus decides that if they cannot run for long, 
It would be better if they hide somewhere rather than stop out in the open. In their frantic flight, they stumble upon a barn and take refuge inside. Peering anxiously through the windows, Marcus can't help but voice his remorse for agreeing to the journey, casting a heavy cloud of guilt over Carmen. She, in turn, apologizes for her insistence on venturing into this ominous place. Tears well up in her eyes as she frantically asks for his forgiveness. Marcus melts at her pitiful sight and hugs her to lessen her guilt. At least this stubborn woman knows that it is her fault after all. Moments later, the villagers converge on the barn, forcing Carmen, Sarah, and Marcus into a frantic escape via the balcony. The latter two manage to jump off. However, Carmen is intercepted by one of the villagers who violently knocks her to the ground. Marcus rushes back to the barn, but he too finds himself face to face with another villager. Amidst the chaos, the sinister butcher arrives, wielding a crossbow, and shoots Sarah in the leg. Simultaneously, Another villager drenches a handkerchief with chloroform, which they press against Sarah's face. In her dazed state, she witnesses the villager's visage transform into something demonic. On the other hand, Marcus flees with the butcher hot on his heel. The latter eventually catches up to him. As Marcus and Butcher engage in a fierce struggle, Butcher eventually subdues Marcus, rendering him unconscious with a dose of chloroform. Sometimes later, Carmen, Sarah, and Marcus regain consciousness through a harsh splash of water. Their surroundings become clear and they spot the young girl in conversation with Butcher. After she departs, the cultists lead them outside the hideout, where they are presented before the cult leader. His gaze lingers on each of them. The cult leader issues orders for Sarah and Carmen to be returned to the hideout, but Marcus is to be taken away. They've discerned that Carmen and Sarah have seen the statue in the fog, making them of particular interest. The two girls are dragged back inside the place where the caskets were kept, but this time, they enter another room. Here a group of men wearing black cloaks already stand and the girls are met by the cult leader who awaits their arrival. The cultists then swiftly clothe them in white dresses. The girls stand there, trembling at the fate that awaits them. The leader approaches and selects Sarah, the one who first laid eyes on the statue. Whereas, Carmen is relegated to a holding cell as the cultists secure Sarah's arms, legs, and head to a ceremonial table. She trembles with anxiety as the cultist proceeds with a gruesome ritual and slashes her lower leg, while the cult leader intones incantations in an unfamiliar language. Sarah, as she gazes at the cult leader, witnesses his face metamorphose into something nightmarish and demonic. Meanwhile, back outside, Marcus is coerced into digging a grave, two villagers menacingly keeping watch with a gun aimed at him. The two men get into an argument and one of them leaves. The other man shouts at Marcus to continue his work. Back inside, the cult leader orders one of his subordinates to fetch the dreaded metal mask they'd seen earlier. The leader keeps on chanting the evil incantations over a trembling Sarah. The subordinates follow suit and as the mask is cruelly set right over Sarah's face, with two menacing spikes hovering above her eyes. The leader is passed a hammer which he uses to hit the mask right onto poor Sarah's face, leading to her instantaneous demise. Carmen, overwhelmed with grief and shock, witnesses this horrifying ordeal. She shouts, crying at what they have done. To her horror, she then observes the face of another villager contorting into a demonic visage as he fixates on her. Outside, seizing a moment of opportunity, Marcus swings the shovel, disarming the man who is keeping watch over him. They get into a scuffle and Marcus gets the upper hand, rendering him unconscious. He swiftly retrieves the gun and, driven by determination, rushes to save Carmen and Sarah. Back inside, the cultists place poor Sarah's lifeless body into a wooden casket. Marcus arrives right that moment to witness this. His heart pounds as he watches this grim scene. Carmen catches him watching from the side. Right then, a man approaches Carmen and tries to drag her over to the tablet. Realizing that his girlfriend is next in line, he launches an aggressive assault on the cultist, rescues her, and locks the malevolent cultists inside. As they flee through the woods, Carmen suddenly pauses, overcome by a strange sensation after vomiting. She hears strange whispers but Marcus snaps her out of it. They soon continue their desperate flight and stumble upon a car parked outside one of the villagers' houses. They break into the house in search of the car keys. Upon entering, they discover a woman in the kitchen. Marcus, wielding the gun, anxiously demands the car keys, but the woman appears unable to comprehend English. In a state of panic, she calls for her husband, but her son arrives instead. Later, the husband arrives as well. The woman, upon noticing Carmen, becomes utterly terrified, prompting Marcus to restrain the couple together in the living room. Back at the hideout, the cultists finally manage to break free from the locked door. In the meantime, back at the house, as Marcus attempts to secure the couple, Carmen is suddenly gripped by an overwhelming sense of unease. She witnesses objects in the house trembling, an eerie phenomenon that chills her to the core. The couple's son turns his gaze towards Carmen, revealing a grotesque, demonic face, sending shockwaves through her. The son conveys a sense of urgency to Marcus, telling him that he needs to leave soon. In response, Marcus, his patience wearing thin, coerces the boy to hand over the car key, still pointing the gun at the couple. Carmen's fear escalates as she observes the couple undergoing a nightmarish transformation into demonic forms, slithering across the floor. To her, Marcus, too, appears to morph into a demon. In reality, Carmen is succumbing to hallucinations, driven by her profound dread. 
Frantically, she seeks refuge in another room, where her senses are continually bombarded with unsettling sights and sounds. The couple's English-speaking son guides Marcus to the kitchen, providing him with the keys to the truck. In a bid to prevent the boy's escape, Marcus restrains him. The boy, however, asserts that Carmen is the one with malevolent intent as she has gazed upon the statue. On the other side, Carmen, now gripped by a sinister force, witnesses her own reflection in a mirror. Fearfully, she falls down to the floor. The malevolent evil overpowers her and she becomes a vessel for the demon, unleashing an intense, piercing scream. Unbeknownst to her, the cultists, hot on their trail, are closing in on their location. As Marcus cautiously enters the room in search of Carmen, another door mysteriously closes behind him, sealing off one possible exit. To his astonishment, he spots another door through which he hears the couple's screams. From the next door, he hears the poor little boy's scream, his voice filled with forcibly pulled away. The door slams shut, and the boy's cries fall silent, only to be followed by another door opening, leading him into the living room. Surveying the living room, Marcus is confronted by a gruesome sight. The family has been brutally slaughtered. Before he can react, the door closes, and the possessed Carmen materializes. She overpowers him, pinning him to the floor and choking him. Her voice filled with cryptic references to tasting fallen angels and the absence of redemption. As her grip tightens, it appears that Marcus's life hangs on the balance. However, their harrowing encounter is abruptly interrupted by the arrival of the cultists. Their leader wields a cross and recites a prayer, revealing that their intent is not to anyone but to expel the demonic entities that have latched onto those who encountered the sinister statue. Cultists assail Carmen one by one, only to meet a swift demise at her hands. The cultist leader persists in his battle against Carmen, using prayer and holy water to combat her demonic possession. Observing the cultist leader's assistance anxiety and fear, the possessed Carmen swiftly turns her attention towards him. Before the leader succumbs to the relentless struggle, he entrusts his duty to Butcher. Carmen then refocuses her attention on Marcus, who is still in dire straits. As Carmen approaches him with sinister intent, Butcher swiftly retrieves the leader's holy water and douses her, fervently reciting the prayer. Butcher proceeds to engage Carmen, reciting the incantation while two cultists pin her hands to the floor using knives. With great care, they position the menacing metal mask over Carmen's face. Her movements make it challenging, and Marcus, with a sense of dread, steps in to help secure the mask properly. He steadies her head, allowing Butcher to wield a sledgehammer, driving the mask into place. Marcus, still reeling from the nightmarish ordeal, cast fearful glances at Butcher and the other cultists, worried about his own fate. To his immense relief, Butcher decides to release him, offering Marcus a ride home, where another villager will drive him away. As Marcus gazes around the forest, curiosity gets the better of him, and he can't help but ask about the fog. In response, Butcher reveals the summer truth. The fog and the statue is a remnant of a long-standing curse that plagues the village, something that cannot be undone. The movie ends with it becoming clear that these cultists are not tourists, but rather endeavoring to prevent the malevolent possessions that result from encountering the haunting statue in the fog.